The Unshackled Waves, episode 88. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. The New Zealand flavour to the episodes continues as I'm still here for another week. I've been running around the country doing numerous in-person interviews with candidates and activists, but I can't get to every place, but there's still some New Zealanders who I'm eager to interview. So I thought uh, with them, why not just do a regular Waves episode uh, via Skype with them? Uh, As you know, at The Unshackled, we cover a lot of news about the Australian nationalist and patriot movement, but does New Zealand have a similar movement? To find out, I thought the best person to speak to was uh, Solomon Tor Kilson, who is the founder of Kiwi Values, uh, whose stated mission is to promote the values that make our country the best place in the world to live, work and raise future generations. He has a Facebook page and YouTube channel called According to Solomon, Uh, which he offers his thoughts on life, politics, as well as his passion for uh, business and South Island regional development. Solomon, welcome to the show. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Now, I thought I'd start off by, uh, so we can all get to know you a bit more. Uh, What's your political activity been to date and what would you say are your personal political values? So um, I'd probably put myself in the uh, uh, classic libertarian, conservative, um, just a little bit bit, uh, turned, pissed off at the system, how everything's going. Um, Probably uh, definitely along the lines of a protectionist, minicist, um, just conservative, um, libertarian. So, you know, kind of of about as uh, right centrist as you can get. So. And have you um, been politically active previously? Yeah, no, I was involved in a couple of startup political parties uh, a few years ago that then got absorbed into the Conservative Party um, back in the day. And then when all that um, fell apart, unfortunately, I haven't been involved in any political parties since then, but I've been very politically um aware I've been keeping an eye on the scene and been trying to network with as many other people in the political sphere as possible, just trying to stay in the loop. Uh, I know that uh, being in uh, political parties, it's it's very draining, and there's a lot of you know stuff that goes goes on behind the scenes that can be very demoralising. Oh, the politics within politics are amazing. Um, yeah, no, you did. You did right. Um, it definitely takes up a lot of your own energy, um, and can be quite disheartening. Like you get you get involved in politics because you want to make a difference. You want to get stuff done, and then uh, change happens slowly. So, yeah, absolutely. And uh, your uh, new group, it's called Kiwi Values. I guess I'll ask you, what are Kiwi values, what do you think are the, you know, values that uh, New Zealanders, you know, adhere to and that are that are worth protecting? Okay, so um, we set up Kiwi Values about um, just over three months ago. Um, it's mainly made up of, made up of um, a large group of people from around New Zealand who have been involved in the political discussion over the last couple of years. Um, and they're mainly a group of people who are just, they're tired of just talking about all the problems facing New Zealand at the minute and are actually wanting to um, talk about what can be done about those problems. Um, you know, the, the old thing of instead of complaining about the problem, actually come up with a solution, actually figure out what we do. Um, so as far as what um, we've kind of figured out, um, New Zealand and Kiwi values as, as a whole. Uh, there is a lot of that around the traditional view on things like um, it's okay to be a guy, it's okay to be a, a, a woman, it's okay to fill those traditional roles. Um, it gets swapped from time to time, but that's fine, whatever. 
but having those traditional roles are, is okay. Um, I think family is very important. The idea of having children and raising good kids, um, that is very, very important in New Zealand um, from the conversations we've been having. Our environment is important. Now, I wouldn't really classify ourselves as a whole bunch of uh, uh, greeny activists or anything like that, but there is a very strong sense of wanting to look after our, our own backyard. Like New Zealand has an amazing environment, it's a unique place. We want to take care of that, we want to look after that. Um, I don't think too many of us are concerned about special snails that live out in the, out in the middle of nowhere, but you know, you look after your own backyard. Um, but I definitely think there's also the fact of um, we can do anything in New Zealand. Like we came out here um, and we had to pull civilization from um, the forest and the, the, the mountains and the, there wasn't a lot here. So we had to create that. Um, so there, there's definitely that number eight wire attitude. So, yeah. Uh, I've noticed in New Zealand that um, the environment is not necessarily a left wing issue. No, no, it's not. Um, in fact, I'd say the interesting dynamic we've had in New Zealand politics is we have the Green Party, which is supposed to be our environmental party, and they've never, um, to my knowledge or anybody I've talked to, they've never actually passed an environmental bill ever. They, they don't actually look out for the environment. People that do tend to look after the environment are a lot of your centrists and a good portion of your right-wingers. Um, I think there's an aspect of... It's, it's a factor of national pride for New Zealand, but it's also one of those things where our environment is the main bringer in for our tourism industry. So as a capitalist, looking after the asset that brings you income is kind of uh, fundamental. So again, looking after our environment because it's what brings us a, in an income, plus it is special. So if you go around the world, you don't really see what New Zealand has in such concentration in such a small place. So it, it is really special to just your average Kiwis. So, you know, you're dead right. It's not just a left-wing issue in New Zealand. And obviously in Australia, the nationalist patriot movement is, is quite big and uh, there's a lot of, you know, support for them. Uh, does New Zealand, does it already have an existing nationalist or patriot movement? Um, I definitely think it's something that's starting to grow. Um, like, there's always been a lot of pride in New Zealand. Um, like I said, um, we're, we really built this country out of nothing, so there is that pride to it. But over the last few decades, that's really kind of been hammered out of us. Um, like, that whole number eight wire um, culture has really, and like, you, you can do anything, and like, you can build anything, you can put your hand to anything, and you can be successful in that. Um, that's really been hammered out of us by the um, the kind of the nanny state mentality and the um, you can't do that or you, you could hurt yourself or rally, 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 rah. Um, I think that's really been beaten out of us and now we're starting to kind of get back to that point where we do want to be proud of who we are, we do want to be proud of our history and our culture um, and kind of I do think there is a growing sense of national pride in New Zealand. Um, it's kind of that... Um, that, that sentiment of more people standing up and going, oh, I'm a Kiwi, I can do anything. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the rules of the universe are just a suggestion, that kind of other thing. So I, I definitely think there's a rise in that nationalistic pride coming back. Yeah. Uh, even though in Australia there's a lot of uh, support for the nationalist movement, there's also a lot of opposition as well. I mean, uh, nearly all of the, the nationalist events, they always attract, you know, left-wing opponents who label it a, you know, Nazi, fascist, you know, bigoted rally. Is there that sort of, you know, opposition to national pride in New Zealand? Um, unfortunately, uh, there is a sense of, in New Zealand, there's always been a sense of, of um, we're, we're very kind, we're very caring, we, we look after people, and that's kind of built into our national psyche a little bit. So I definitely think there's New Zealand as a whole is like three degrees to the left um, as far as our political leanings go. Um, and as that's developed, there's definitely been a um, very heavy progressive, um, almost communistic kind of 
um, culture that's developed within New Zealand politics. And that really has, I think, um, had a go and had a bash at um, the Kiwi culture that I've been telling you about um, and trying to change that. So, yeah, I, I, there's definitely resistance to the um, Kiwi spirit, I think, in New Zealand. Uh, well, yeah, it's, uh, resistance is one term for it, but in, in Australia, it's more like uh, thuggery. Like if you want to, you know, hold an event, you know, celebrating uh, Australia, then you've got to have, you know, police protection. Have you, what are you hoping to achieve with Kiwi Vos? Would you like to hold, you know, public, public events? What's your, what's your aim? So uh, as far as uh, what we're aiming to do and what our goals are and our, simply put, our goal is to really start that conversation of what do we do now? Like, where are we going next? Um, because I think New Zealand as a whole has really become quite disorientated. We're not quite sure where we're going. So I think we're really coming into a phase of rediscovering who we are as a nation. So our goal is really to start that conversation and kind of take that conversation around New Zealand um, as a whole um, and really go out there and talk. We're, we want to talk to more average Kiwis. We want to have that discussion and find out what people think the answers to the problems we're facing are and then actually start taking steps to enact those answers and actually start to create real change. Um, and I mean, as far as what that looks like, um, we're working on organising our team leaders to start travelling around New Zealand, start holding public meetings from there, start organising and hosting uh, local community and cultural events and actually start building up that, um, that culture, that pride, that sense of um, unity in the country. Um, and then from there actually start um, supporting and developing those cultures and those communities around New Zealand. Um, in short, I think our big goal is to really give people a home. Like we're, we're not quite sure where we're going as a country, so actually give people an ideological home to belong to, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's, I've often found with Australia is that there's, you know, widespread support for, you know, Australian values and, and pride in country, but often a lot of it doesn't go further than just, uh, you know, people expressing their frustrations on the internet. And that's the, that, that's the big challenge. You've got to sort of harness that frustration that people have, you know, through Facebook posts or, or whatever and actually bring it to actual political activism. Yeah, um, I, I tend to think it's one of those things where you can't keep complaining about the problem. If you have a problem, you need to fix it. And I, I, again, I think this does it really does go back to our, our number eight wire mindset of if you have a problem, if you don't fix it, it's going to go to hell on you. So you really do need to fix your, the problems you're facing. So I, I think we, we do have a we definitely have a more, look, let, let's figure this out, find out what's going wrong, fix it. Um, and I think that that's really where we're going for, is actually taking that next step and doing it. So. And what's the reception been so far? I mean, obviously you said you've only been in existence for a few months. What's the, what, what feedback have you received? Oh, Loads of support, everybody. So far, um, other than the occasional troll that comes through, um, it's been overwhelmingly supportive. Um, I don't think we've talked to anybody that doesn't really agree with what we're standing for. Uh, you talk to average people about what we're wanting to do and what we're wanting to get started, and I, I haven't really seen or heard of any real opposition to that. Um, even a couple of the people we've got who have been quite reserved, they've floated what we're talking about and they haven't got the negative reaction that they're expecting. Um, I definitely think the, I suppose, the left-wing ideal, the, the, the idea that we're fighting a um, big left-wing whatever, um, I don't think that's quite as come through in reality quite as much as a lot of people have been thinking it is. So I, I definitely think there's a lot more public support for what we're 
genuine public support from your average Kiwis for what we're wanting to do than what I think a lot of people have been expecting because um, we haven't got anything but positive support so far. So it's, it's been really neat. Yeah, hopefully you can uh, take the next step and, and harness it. Now, obviously, you've uh, started Kiwi Values because obviously you're uh, concerned about the, the future of the, the nation. What, what, do you, what are some of the, the challenges that you see that the nation is facing in the immediate future? Um, I really think it has a lot to do with identity. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of this idea of um, we're little America or we're little United Kingdom um, and if we want to be successful in the world then we have to be just like them um, and we have to be just like everybody else and I think that's really where a lot of our problems have come from. We've gone, we've gone from a mindset of we can do anything to uh, well we want to be part of the cool kids club and I think there's an idea that, that we don't have to be, so we can really go out and do it on our own. Um, and that's going to come with, there's going to be a lot of challenges that come with that, of course. Um, but it, it's, I don't think it's quite as hard as people have imagined it to be. Um, like the threats that we face, like every, every, every country, every state has its problems. Um, but if you actually just take them on head on, I don't think they're anywhere near as – they're hard, but I don't think they're anywhere near as impossible as they feel. Um, so, yeah, we've got the we've got the establishment, we've got the, uh, the universities, we've got the left-wing ideals, we've got all of that, but I really don't think it's going to be that bad, if you know what I mean. So I think it's just a case of um, gritting your beef, gritting your teeth and bearing it and actually just tackling it and going hell for leather, man. So. Does New Zealand's small size in terms of both uh, land mass and population, does that uh, grate on, you know, people's minds that, you know, we're so small, we're you know, never going to be able to be a, a world leader, we, you know, may as well just, you know, follow these larger nations? Um, I definitely think there's a, a sense of, um, oh, we're not that important. Um, I definitely think that that has come into our psyche and I don't know if that's because of the isolationism that we've um, suffered through like we've been like there's still a lot of people around the world that where's New Zealand nobody even knows that New Zealand exists I think there has been an aspect of the isolationism has affected us a little bit but at the same time for as small a country as we are and as small as our population is we constantly had a punch way above our weight. We, we do things where we have invented so many things that have changed so many millions of lives, hundreds of millions and billions of lives, and we've, we've created things, we've invented stuff, we, we've challenged the status quo, and we've done things. I mean, example being the, um, the nuclear free. Like, who the hell tells America and Russia to sod off, we're not having your nuclear powered ships in our, in our ports? Like, who does that? Um, so we've we've done big things um, that we know is or we think are right at the time, and I think it's just a case of embracing that and um, actually having some confidence in ourselves and actually accepting that, that 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 taking hold of that mana that we have and actually punching through it. Um, so yeah, I do I do think there's a little bit of a, we're not important mindset in New Zealand, but I don't think it's I don't think it's going to hold us back when it actually comes time for the crunch. So I definitely think it's something we can push through. Uh, as a, uh, you've probably heard of it, the old joke in Australia that we should just, you know, annex New Zealand uh, because it is actually mentioned as a as a state in our, uh, our constitution. Long time ago. Um, yeah, yeah like you, you guys can try. You guys can try if you want. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> Um, I, I don't think you can handle us, man. Um, like New Zealand and Australia, we have a really good like we're we're good cousins. We're, we're good cousins. No, uh, and the, I definitely think there's a strong uh, nobody picks on our cousin but us. Um, so, but no, uh, it's no. I, th I think New Zealand's a little bit too independent spirited. So it's okay. <laughs> 
I, I have noticed that even though Australia and New Zealand are similar in, in many ways, there's still uh, a lot of difference and throughout our conversation, there's obviously, you know, we value different things. Sure. Um, yeah, no, I, I just think it's one of those things where you, you look at our history, uh, our histories in development have been very different. Um, and just the environments that we've had to deal with are very different. I think Australia's, um, I think New Zealand and Australia have harsh environments, but in different ways. So like you, you, like you guys have to deal with the heat over there, but we really um, have to face the um, subtropical environments and stuff like that. So I do think that those two extremes have bred quite, like you said, similar, socially similar, but culturally different um, attitudes and customs and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And what's your assessment on the state of New Zealand politics? How do you think the the current crop of politicians are, are letting you down? Um, my take on New Zealand politics at the moment is um, when there's when nothing good can happen, it's best for nothing to happen. And I think New Zealand has really hit a stalemate in New Zealand. Um, the end of this election, I think there, there's no, there's not going to be a strong government. I think whoever gets in, it's going to be a very weak government on both sides, and they're going to hold each other in stalemate. And I think until New Zealand really figures out what we're wanting to do, I think kind of having the government in uh, deadlock with each other is kind of the best thing that can happen. Um, I don't think there's going to be any clear winner, and I don't think there's going to be any clear loser. Um, it's very down the middle at the minute. So, um, like I say, when you've got no good option, nothing is a good option. So you're certainly of the, the libertarian viewpoint that if the government's in paralysis, that's a good thing because they're, uh, they're, they're not able to m mess with our lives much. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I'd say it's one of those things where there's no strong leadership in New Zealand. And when there's no strong leadership, um, it, it's... I, I'm all down for like New Zealand having a strong leader. I, I'm mad keen on somebody standing up in New Zealand and going, right, this is where we're going, this is what we're doing. But until that happens, um, when, when the government when the government itself doesn't even know what it's doing, I don't think it can tell the citizenry what to do. If, the, if, the, if we did have a strong leader who really knew, uh, had a really strong direction to take New Zealand, I'd be fine with that. I'd be fully fine with that. Um, but until that time happens, uh, I, I don't think you can let. I don't think you can have a house that is in chaos. Try and teach everybody else how to live an orderly life, if you know what I mean. So you think it's you know, definitely looking for for that you know strong representative mm. leader. That's that's what you'd like to see. Yeah, definitely. Has is there any leaders in New Zealand history which you think have embodied that? Um, well, being in the South Island, Julius Vogel was always a favourite, um, and yeah, no, he, he did, he, he, he was the one, um, yeah, no, he, he was one of our early Prime Ministers, um, and he had a really strong vision for New Zealand. He was of the opinion that New Zealand could be the Britain of the South Seas, and in the 1800s, making that kind of a statement was quite a, um, that was really a big prideful moment of New Zealand all the way out in the middle of nowhere could be the, the Britain of the South Seas. That's, that's, there's a lot of pride in that statement. So. And obviously you're from the, the South Island. Is there, do you feel that there's a difference between the, the cultures of the North and South Island? And if so, is that a problem? Um, well, I was actually born in the uh, North Island, um, to the shock and horror of many. Um, but yeah, I do think there is quite a strong difference between the uh, North and the South Island cultures. Um, there has been, um, ever since like, the mid to late um, 1800s, there has been talk of that perhaps the North and the South should be um, uh, different states under a federal government or just two independent nations. That discussion has been there and has been constantly there. Um, I think more on the South Island 
um, side than the North Island side. Um, but there is there is quite a distinct difference between the North and South, and uh, anybody that travels a lot between the North and the South Island does pick that up. Um, I, I definitely think the South Island is a lot more conservative than the North Island, um, and, and, I, and I think a lot more business oriented than the um, North Island as well. So, and uh, probably secession would yeah be a bit radical, but certainly I'm <laughs> yes. I'm a big believer in like uh, dissolution of of power, and certainly um, having. State, state governments would, would definitely allow a certain degree of autonomy and it also helps protect the local culture. Well, it does. And I mean, there are plenty of great examples of that working. There's um, uh, Switzerland, there's the UK, there's Australia, there's the United States. Um, it's a methodology that has been tried and tested and does work. Um, I, I think it, there's... Um, I do think decentralisation um, would be a good move um, for New Zealand as a whole, um, just for the fact that we are different um, and it's okay to be different. And I think that's one of the other things that does really need to be appreciated in the world today is the fact that it is okay to be different. You don't have to be like robots all the same. It, it doesn't have to – we don't have to be – you can be a, you can be something. You don't have to be nothing, as far as like culture and our identity goes. It's okay to be unique, um, and I think that is um, something that should be encouraged. And as as far as uh, national or regional identities go, um, but yeah, no, uh, yeah. Uh, in Australia, we've also noticed our you know national institutions you know, being being undermined. Like often the the left uh, infiltrates them. Like for example, they've made a mockery of our uh, Australian of the Year awards. Has has the political political elite and assisted by academia and the media have they done similar things to New Zealand's institutions? Um, absolutely. Um, there, there's no question on that. Um, no, I, I, I think the I think the left has always been drawn to institutions because um, there's a certain level of protection within institutions um, that you don't have when you are out there running your own business or running a farm or when you're doing stuff yourself. Um, so I, I do tend to think they gravitate towards that, and that does undermine the good and the welfare for everybody else. Um, if you're looking for areas where um, the social justice cause has um, run rampant and caused a lot of problems, um, you just look at the Treaty of Waitangi debate um, and what's happened there. Now, yes, um, bad stuff did happen um, to the Murray, but at the same time, why should we be paying that debt forever and why should my generation that never, never done anything and doesn't have any um, living family or remembrance of any family who did anything, why should we be paying for the mistakes of our great-great-grandfathers? Um, it's not, it doesn't make sense. Um, but the because of the social justice and um, um, campaign in New Zealand, um, we are made to feel guilty over what people that have been long dead did a long time ago. Um, to people that aren't around anymore, and um, it, it, that's that's not justified, and that's not okay. Yeah, I, I think there's a certain point where things should be made right, but it shouldn't be at the cost of the entire country. We can't, you can't bankrupt a country for a small group of people. It does just, it doesn't work that way, and it can't work that way, and it's killing us. So uh, you'll never, never satisfy the, these type of people. I mean, once you concede one thing, they'll demand even more, and uh, that, that's happened in Australia. There's always some new demand, and it's it's never quite yeah. enough. Yeah, dead right, dead right. Um, and I think it's it's just one of those things where, um, again, coming back to our identity of what do we want in a country, I think that really needs to be talked about. And as far as right, when do we just when do we say enough is enough? Where do we draw the line in the sand? Where do we go, right, we're done with this, we're moving on? Because this is the thing. The world is changing so much that we can't afford to hold on to grievances from the past because um, 
not only is it tripping us up, but it's actually um, fully distracting us from the dire problems that we are facing in the world today. Um, the world is going in very interesting places and being distracted by stuff that happened 100 plus years ago isn't going to help us in the world today. Do you believe that the the politicians of both parties they 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 lack the sort of courage to you know stand st stand up to these sort of demands? Absolutely, um, and I I think you're seeing this all over the world at the minute is politicians are doing their best to keep their job. That's it, no longer representing the people or representing the good of the people or the good of the districts. It is purely keeping their day job. Um, and the only way to keep their day, their day job is to not rock the boat. Um, and the best way to not rock the boat is just to sell out and give out as much as you can to um, the people that make the most noise. Uh, uh, that's something I've noticed with like, uh, Bill English is probably, like they say, he's the most you know, conservative prime minister in a, in a long time yet, yeah, but he, is, he appears to be very hesitant to you know, tackle, you know, for example, the bureaucracy, which seems to run rampant over, over the New Zealand people, whether it's you know, taxpayers' money or, or cultural programs. He seems to take a hands-off approach. Yeah. Um... I think that it could be a lot worse than Bill, um, but at the same time, it's still one, he's not a strong leader. He's he's not taking charge of the situation, um, whether in a good or a bad way. Um, so he's not um, he's not ditching the problem, but he's not solving the problem either. If you know what I mean. So um, it's a very stalemate mentality and very stalemate behaviour. And obviously the, the politician and party which is seen as the most nationalistic is New Zealand first. Yep. Uh, what would, you, what would you, your, your assessment be of them? Um, <laughs> I, I'd say I'd probably differ um, from a lot of other people on the right um, in New Zealand as I tend to view New Zealand first as a spanner in the works. Um, Winston Peters has a long history of um, being a troublemaker in Parliament and just blocking everything. Um, and I think at this point in time, he acts as a massive break on the government. Um, so whether he get whether the left gets in or whether whether Labor gets in or whether a national gets in, he will he will slow down both of them in whatever they're trying to do if he gets in with them. And I tend to think that's a good thing at the moment. Like I said, for previous reasons, New Zealand doesn't know where it's going. So um, slowing down everything as far as the government's decision-making goes until we have a strong leader, I think is probably a positive thing. Um, I, wouldn't, I don't out and out support um, New Zealand first, but I do see where they are useful. Uh, so, uh, Winston Peters, he's, he's not the leader that you're seeking. Um, he, he's just got a bad history. Um, like, how he's speaking at the moment, great. But he's spoken like this before, um, and when he has been in power, he hasn't... He talks big, but he doesn't deliver. He is a career politician. Now, he's probably the best career politician we have in New Zealand, but he's still a career politician. Uh, that, that's what a lot of people have been uh, eager to point out, that how can you have an anti, anti establishment politician who's been around for 30 years? <laughs> it's a valid critique. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, he does have a reputation of being a reed in the wind. Winston Peters will do what's best for Winston Peters. Um, and I know a lot of um, people on the right pro I don't like that sentiment, but that is what he's done historically. And will pe people don't change really? So I, I tend to think that will, that's what he'll do in the future. But he does make for a great spanner in the works. And can I get a final election prediction from you? I mean, I'm following the election quite closely, and I've got—I have no idea how it's going to go. The polls are just all over the place. Yeah, I, I, I'd say I'm in very much in the same boat. I think, like, and I haven't voted yet just for the fact of everything changes on a daily basis. Um, 
and I, there's no way I could say who's going to win or lose. All I will say though is it will be a weak government, and it won't. Nothing will change. Nothing will change. They won't do anything. They'll just fight for the next three years, and hopefully in the next three years somebody will actually come up with a good idea of where to go forward on, and um, hopefully change at that stage. So. Well, hopefully you can assist with that happening. But uh, thank you, Solomon, for giving giving us your insight and obviously good luck with uh, Kiwi values and we'll certainly keep an eye on it. No, my pleasure, Tim. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. Uh, just to let you know, we'll be again doing two review shows this week, one for Australia and the rest of the world, and the other focusing on the closing stages of the New Zealand election. Don't forget our election night live stream on Saturday, uh, September 23rd from 3 p.m. Australian Eastern Time, which will be hosted alongside our friends at Right Minds New Zealand. Also, don't, uh, don't forget we are the sponsor of the first ever uh, Livedy Fest conference in Brisbane on Saturday the 14th of October 2017, uh, hosted by our good friends at Livedy Works. You can get a 20% discount on tickets by visiting livedyfest.org.au using the coupon code LFUNSHAC, all caps. Thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.